Finch. Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. We are here with our supporters group and we are going to be talking about free and open source software. This is uh, Mark and Salbu started getting into this quite a bit uh, at the end of the last show we had and uh, um, they, they wanted to go ahead and continue the discussion live for everybody because it was a good discussion to go live. So um, that's what we're going to do today, and I just pulled up just a couple little auxiliary places, uh, articles there. Of course, I need to fix my article view, I think. Oh, no, my article view is looking just fine. All right, so uh, we're, uh, we're doing that. Uh, how's everybody doing today? Pretty I'm good. Fine. Peachy. All right, we got peachy pretty good and fine. There you go. Nobody's like, exuberance and amazingness is dripping from my life every day. But this is 2021. If that <laughs> happens to anybody, you're probably a maniac. <laughs> uh, we got uh, Strawberry Shortcake watching over on Discord. I'm monitoring comments over there. Uh, uh, TLM.li forward slash STLD to jump on the Discord server. And we are on the live chat section. Uh, let's see, Shadow, donate and open source. Donate or else. There you go. <laughs> yes, it's not free and open source. It's donate and open source. Get it right. Uh, Jeff's on. Let's see. I mean, every wife complains about Charles' wife as being freely open source whenever he's at work, out of sight, being out of mind and all. There you go. Raz Review is told by a friend of mine that he only wanted to go free and open source. I said, start with your teeth. There won't be any left. There you go. Uh, let's see. Add track wheels to chairs. So you know that was an option. Going, uh, nice going puzzle. Wait, wait, adding tracks to wheelchairs. Hmm. Interesting. That's pretty epic. I gotta say. Um, it's like, it's like a tank wheelchair. Don't get run over by the, by the, uh, you know, modern armor wheelchair, I guess. I don't know. Uh, yes, the stream is really happening. How's it going there? I hate to see where the footrests are. Yeah. <laughs> Do I need to look up these, uh, these, um, these wheelchairs with, tre with treads on them? That's kind of interesting. Two days ago, I heard the news about Texas residents asking to conserve energy despite spring weather. I've just had a bad dream about suffering another lengthy blackout. Joseph, get yourself some battery backups and stuff. That's the best you can do. Um... Or is Joseph safe. located on the West yeah. Coast? Uh, possibly or, in Texas because Texas, of uh, because of making the comment on that. But but as yeah. you know, I've been spending a lot of time looking at at the best off gridding stuff. I'm actually because I'm a DIY kind of do it yourself FOSS type dude, so I'm actually building my batteries because I'm not too much of a geek. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the um, uh, the other one, if you want to buy a lithium battery, the one of the best ones on the market for your keeping your costs low is the SOK batteries. Um, there is a guy named w Will Prowse who has a channel called DIY Solar with Will Prowse. He actually buys every lithium battery he can find and disassembles them and to see what they are. He said the SOK batteries are absolutely one of the best and they're one of the cheapest. They're like the only lithium battery that's like less than $800 for a single battery. So they're like right about 600 or so for a, um, a 100 amp hour, which a 100 amp hour battery will power your computers for a couple of days. And if you throw a couple sol small solar panels on there, you have a, a pretty good um, alternative um, uh, current system, at least enough to power a few little odds and ends. Yeah, so, so um, I'm not sure it was the, if it was the same guy, but uh, there is this guy. Uh, I think he has a YouTube channel where he... Uh, yeah, the boys um, uh, lithium batteries from all from uh, all from um, uh, uh, electric vehicles uh, who are yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and he powers his en entire house with that. So if the power goes out, he doesn't see it until the, the battery uh, drains completely flat in uh, four or five days time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's there's a lot of cool things. Uh, Jason, there not strictly FOSS, but remember criticism of Raspberry Pis and Microsoft Repo reinstalled 64-bit beta Pi OS and notice it doesn't have the Microsoft repos. Um, so is it uh, is 64-bit just Debian with a Pi? So it depends on what sh what you're using. The, it was Raspberry uh, Raspberry Pi OS did it. I'm wondering if they might have backtracked on that after a lot of criticism. Um, it made sense to put the Microsoft repo in the full recommended software desktop. It did not make any sense to put it in the server. So 
Um, that's the thing to look at. So who knows? Maybe they backtracked on that after saying they wouldn't. I don't know. Yeah, um, I think that they yeah. had a, a good idea and they didn't think uh, through uh, all the uh, yeah. Implications so of like doing that. The Raspberry Pi initially was designed for education stuff, but there's a lot of people like I use several Raspberry Pis in production environment here. We're not using education stuff. I don't want Microsoft repos in there, you know, uh, unless it's I plan to use it. Now there is a version of the build that has recommended software, which includes all the education packs. It makes absolute perfect sense to put the Microsoft repo in that. And I have no qualms about that at all. But if I want to use it for a server base, I don't need a Microsoft repo that is designed to deliver a GUI application in a server system. And so who knows, maybe they backtracked. I haven't followed up on it since then, but uh, who knows? Maybe I, I, maybe if you guys want, I'll, I'll look into it because I have other Raspberry Pis to throw in production. So um, that's, that's that. All right. Um, any other brief discussion before we get into our topic for the day? No. Going once, in, going twice. I was um, um, uh, losing uh, my uh, mind uh, <laughs> an, an hour or so ago. Um I am um, um, I am one of the sysadmins of the uh, of a data association. Um, uh, we have uh, a few servers, uh, two physical and uh, the rest is uh, uh, virtual. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, decided uh, to have uh, uh, the root user uh, have all the emails. Who um, in, in, um, instead of having to log into each and every server to check for uh, uh, what is going on. Um, uh, it was decided that um, uh, all uh, root user emails should be forwarded to uh, to the mail alias that um, uh, we use uh, uh, mm. amongst the admins to uh, communicate back and forth. And uh, one of the machines uh, started sending um, six emails uh, uh, each hour um, huh. about yeah. the same thing each and every hour. So, so was it a, uh, like block. a spam type thing? Yeah, and I don't and, and uh, I don't have access to, to that system, so I can't fix it. So I have now <laughs> blocked it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, with a uh, rejection notice, that will yeah. get the um, uh, main uh, sysadmin chief um, a big um, headache. <laughs> All right. So Yoshi OST asks, are we going to cover all the common shareable free licenses? Um, I don't have any real specific agenda here. Um, this is a supporter stream. We just kind of get on and we we chat with the group and see where it goes. So if anybody thinks of it, yeah, we'll do that. If it's in this Wikipedia article I have pulled up here, sure, we'll go it. But I don't have any specific solid agenda. These are kind of like my, uh, you know, the supporters and stuff will help guide the discussion. And uh, we just kind of do it to to hang out and uh, have a good time. And, uh, you know, for me, it's it's not excessively planned. Uh, Joseph's thinking about Raspberry Pi next year. Heard that will not stream 1080p videos too well. Um, it will not if you're running like the Raspberry Pi desktop, but if you drop Cody in there, it, it should do just fine. Um, so it depends on what your application is that you are wanting to run. You don't, you're not going to run up a Raspberry Pi desktop and, and play 1080p videos. Uh, on YouTube, but you can spin up like a, a Kodi server or things like that, and you can do it. I tell you what, I'll lead off because mom's at the yep. door with food, and uh, then I'll let right. Dan and I'll scurry back up real quick. All right, I so, will uh, start off. Go ahead, Mark. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Mark. You got the floor. Okay, um, I will start off with to say the difference, and I know a lot of people in the chat do know, but there may be some new viewers that don't know. Um, the difference between fr the difference between free and open source software is that open source is free as in liberty copy left. And what I mean by that is the code is open and viewable and can be revised and uh, audited for security vulnerabilities or privacy issues. The code can be audited by anyone because that, code is the code behind the program that runs in the background that you do not see. Every program has code in it. It's all code. And uh, that is auditable. Mm -hmm. The free software, you know what? I was thinking different. I was thinking like freeware. Well, there's a couple different kinds of software. There's freeware software yeah. uh, that kind of functions like shareware. And it's proprietary. And then there's the polar opposite of that. 
the freeware just means free in cost. And then yeah. there's the... Uh, and, and then there is a share which, uh, which uh, you are uh, required to buy it after a period of testing. Mm -hmm. Then there's free software that is just, you know, it's it's pure. It's, it's it's supposed to be as pure as the driven snow. Little to no uh, proprietary blobs in it. The reason you don't want the proprietary blobs is because oftentimes companies can sneak in things to invade your privacy. They're, they even have a tendency to sneak what is classified as malware mm -hmm. uh, by many security professionals into it, or an, or a, a rogue employee could inject some code into it, and it's not uh, it's only checked by a select group of individuals that have access to it. So it may go out to the market, be put up on a website, and you can get a virus or you may get like a key log or something like that whereas free software it's pure as the driven snow so to speak and it's yeah. not include any proprietary blobs but the drawback with free software <laughs> we'll discuss the drawbacks in another mm -hmm. round i think yeah. i've said plenty yeah yeah, so there, there's a lot of discussion back and forth. Uh, Saw Blue has yeah. a nice article when it says turn, looking at where it misses the point. Um, but uh, yeah, because we'll there, in, there, right. there is a there is a, uh, an ethical uh, difference between uh, uh, the, uh, the term free software and the term mm -hmm. open source because they don't mean the same thing. Yeah, liberty, uh, many liberty, people don't know yeah. that. Yes, and, and that's really the thing. So first and foremost, let's chat about this. Let's get this out of the way. By free software, we're not meaning software without cost. Although right. most most free software is is you know free as in it's not going to cost you money either. Um, so I, I would there, even there say are that, some of those more odds developers and ends. Are waking. Yeah, mm -hmm. more so, developers are waking up to the point that they need to be paid. Uh, for their projects, they can't just run off. Of yeah, and and there's, that's why paid. we we have to we have to support the projects that we use. And some companies yeah. are moving this model. Um, it was again controversial, although I didn't re really see the point of the controversy. I don't even remember if I specifically covered it. But if you if you're mm -hmm. running like an Arch system or you've installed the Linux version recently or you've had the up full upgrade to the latest LibreOffice. The, the latest LibreOffice 7 is now called LibreOffice Community Edition because there's a Community Edition, there's an Enterprise Edition now. Now, that's all free software, but what they I'll were doing with that. that is the Community Edition is the one that anybody can use it, even for a commercial, proce um, a commercial project. Uh, but it's designed kind of like a, a sole proprietor, like me working in an office alone. That's who, kind of th who it's designed for. I use it to write books. I use it to process books. These are all things that it's used for. And uh, these are all, all important things. And then on the other hand with it, um, their enterprise edition is designed kind of like Red Hat. Hey, you can deploy this across your enterprise. We're just asking you to pay a, a support contract so we can help you out. And then what happens is the community build ends up being effectively the beta testing for what goes on onto the enterprise edition. And this is kind of where they, they break down. That's a good way to monetize your free and open source software. And I don't have any qualms with that at all. Yeah. So... And also, uh, 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 one example of um, a free software that you uh, that you have to uh, uh, that you have to uh, uh, buy in order to, to get access to, uh, or at least uh, compile the, the versions of is uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Mm -hmm. um, CentOS was uh, uh, copied uh, every uh, uh, source uh, uh, package that uh, uh, Red Hat uh, uh, published, and they um, uh, rebranded it as CentOS, and they uh, published the exact the same system uh, only named uh, CentOS. Yeah, so, 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 um, so maybe that's why CentOS had to go to the bottom of the ocean <laughs> in Galatius. So, yeah. um, Dan, do you want to jump in with any, any specific comments here? Uh, well, yeah, free and open source software. Um, free being that it's not free in cost. It's free because it's open to anybody look at the uh, source code of it and analyze it or um, make a fork of it or whatever the case may be. Um, one of the problems I have with the Linux um, software is 
there's more and more of it coming along every day that I haven't discovered. Mm -hmm. I mean, the advertising for open source software is horrible. Yeah. At least in my, I mean, everybody's familiar with the LibreOffice, GIMP, you know, and stuff like that. It's commonly used stuff, Rhythmbox. But I discovered something. I was watching someone else's YouTube stream on hard drives and SSDs. And that um, SSDs come with a limited warranty, whether they're three or five years. And with that warranty, you're guaranteed X amount of write cycles. Mm -hmm. And they brought up a piece of software called um, Crystal Disk Info. But it's a Windows program. And um, it, it'll, it'll talk to your SSD, tell you how many write cycles it's done, what it's done here, there, and everything else, and a bunch of other technical info that the no average person will know nothing about. <laughs> and I actually tried to go to the website. I went and used um, the DuckDuckGo and the start page and to see if there was a Linux version available. And I couldn't find one, but I did find a thread in the Ubuntu forums where there's this program called um, G Smart uh, Smart Control. Yeah, and it's like a and it's, it's like the similar thing to the Crystal Disk Info. And you open this thing up, and it won't open unless you give it your root password. But you click on a disk, and there's so much information. It's unbelievable. It's got read-write cycles. It's got diagnostic tools in it. It's got self-checkers. It's got unbelievable amounts of information that the normal person, you know, would not need. But, you know, it's there if they can want to learn how to figure it all out. It works with hard drives, too. Yeah. And, and it's uh, that, um, uh, that uh, the type of software is what... Uh, uh, many uh, data centers and uh, um, uh, now, the, the, the person that wrote the, this Linux version, uh, it took me to the GitHub page where you could get the um, source code to this. But it, it had happened to be that there was a re there was um, you were able to get it through the Debian repos with ease installed without going through the download the source, compiling it and all that junk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, you would never know that there is something like that out there unless you made a mission to go look for it. Yeah, yeah, that and, is a, and that definitely software a is also packaged in all the major uh, distributions. I use it myself. Yeah, you know about it then. Yeah, see, it's yeah. something yeah. I just I stumbled across it because somebody was doing a uh, identical thing with a Windows version that I thought was really cool. Yeah. And, yeah. and maybe maybe this is for for us Linux YouTubers. You know, I need to kick myself to this a little bit more. Maybe we need to be on the front edge watching the new software coming down the pipeline, so we can let the community know about it. You know, um, uh, yeah. And I have a few things in my inbox. I mean, that, some that of the some of the out. Linux some of the Linux newspapers and stuff like that should have a little area where they can advertise some of this late breaking mm -hmm. stuff. You know. The, if you if you read the um, if you read the little sidebar notes on DistroWatch, they actually will tell you the latest packages that have updated. Although they don't add new packages until they have a little bit of a following, so um, that's definitely something to to consider, I guess. I mean, I myself have come to the point where I've made a um, a a, uh, a text sheet to say where you actually, I got a whole list of everything that everybody recommended to me that I tried out and will note what it does or something like that in case I want to download that package and play with it again. Mm. You know, so I have kind of like a directory of everything everybody's shoved my way to look at and I've played with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, Jason Thomas says he's an attorney, even overwhelmed with all the software licenses available for the FOSS software. There seems to be so many. Can you narrow down to the best licenses? Uh, I don't remember all of the odds and ends of, of all of the licenses personally. I think Salbu might have the best handle on all that. But um, ultimately, like the biggest ones you'll find are like the GPL license. Uh, this one here, pretty much you can open it, you can utilize it, you can modify it, you can distribute it so long as you 
list uh, where the original source came from. So there's basically a, a track and everything going back. That's really good. The only really bad one, really bad one in, in the community is some people are trying to move into, and I forget the name of this one, DistroTube recently did a, a really excellent video of it. Um, where it's coming on the verge of these more um, activists that are trying to produce the software license whereby you can only use it if you're not using it for these banned purposes. Those types of licenses and software I'd yeah. probably stay away from. Um, well, you so know, um, what we asked is uh, somebody asked about uh, a lawyer even overwhelmed with FOSS software options. Uh, can you narrow down uh, just a couple of the specific ones he should look at? Like what's the big pros there are two and cons? Types of, there are uh, two types of free software licenses. Um, um, uh, there is the uh, GNU GPL, which is... Uh, uh, there is a few others. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know the name of it. MIT is uh, another one. Yeah, um, uh, uh, they, uh, they are uh, copyleft licenses, meaning uh, you can do um, uh, pretty much what you want with the software, with the only limit that uh, you can't um, um, uh, uh, give a Fork copy it. to someone and not give the source code at the same time, or yeah. add uh, some uh, or add limitations of, on what they can do with the software. Whereas the other, uh, the other kind of licenses are um, uh, uh, non uh, copyleft licenses. They, they are still free software licenses, but um, uh, uh, commonly known as uh, BSD type uh, licenses, uh, where um, uh, you can uh, download a copy of that and you can um, change something or change nothing and um, ship uh, a brand new version and not ship the source code along with the software. Uh, that is legal. Uh, one good example of this is the, the um, OpenSSL uh, uh, library that um, secures the, the internet. Um, Microsoft uses that in the in in the um, Windows uh, source code, and um, mm -hmm. they le uh, legally can uh, uh, can um, prevent anyone from seeing the uh, source code uh, uh, mm -hmm. that they use. And, and, yeah, uh, and the, the free, free software foundation's point is that if uh, you uh, want your software to always remain free, you need to to uh, uh, use a copy left uh, type license, and the, uh, mm -hmm. the most um, uh, commonly used one is is the GPL. Yeah. Um, apparently, there is a uh, Ed's, uh, Ed Ted Zed says in Discord, Mozilla has a license, but I don't know how well it aligns with FOSS. Do you, anybody know anything about the Mozilla license? I don't know. Ed it's got to be loose enough for Libre uh, um, Libre Wolf to actually fork it. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is a, it is a, a BSD type license. Only they mm -hmm. made their own. Uh, yeah, I mean, Fi Firefox itself is is free and open source, so you can take yeah. it. One it one thing about stuff. Libre uh, uh, Libre Wolf over Firefox, I noticed it's hard and so hard you can't print nothing from Libre Wolf. You have to go back to <laughs> Mozilla, the Firefox, to hmm, actually sure. get, to print it. I've not actually had a problem with that. Well, I mean, I haven't tried that. I guess. I mean, um, well, I, I, I know, did. Yeah, I know I don't use LibreWolf on this computer for OBS interfacing because it won't interface with OBS. Well, either, so. an example was I wanted to print off a, a good RX uh, medications coupon. Mm -hmm. um, I got, you know, I opened the website, put the medicine in, it gave me the coupon and a button to print it. <laughs> it would not print it any which way you tried it. Now I, 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 not the I took the link save. and took it over to Firefox, pasted it in, and it popped right out the printer. Yeah. Oh. The Maybe I just the... don't know what I'm doing, you know? <laughs> that often happens. Hmm. I push Control P from Lieber Wolf, and it seems to not have a problem. I, I have not tried that, but I didn't want the whole web page. I just wanted the coupon. Interesting. I don't know. Maybe they had scammy code in there somewhere. Mm. Yeah, or maybe <laughs> they have know. a check to, to see that, it, um, um, uh, that uh, to, uh, to verify that is actually a um, uh, web browser that is printing. And uh, there are so many uh, web browsers forking each other that they don't have a check, check for everyone. Well, now that LibreWolf is a flat pack, I'm using it as a flat pack because I can't mm. get it to compile. And I wish the people at LibreWolf would make it the all-in-one package like they did for Waterfox and some of the um, Firefox releases. We just unzip them into a folder and they run right from that folder. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, or you have a, 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 a repo that one can add to one's um, app sources and, and in and I and, mean, uh, yeah. you know, that, that that's that, that's even too much work. If they made the all in one thing that works, I found it works with every distro you want to try except Arch. Arch is a little finicky, I guess. Hmm. But yeah, I, you know, I tested. Well, I just tested it out on Arch. It seemed all right. Um, let's see. Perhaps I was talking I, about the all in one package yeah. thing, you know, that they yeah. usually yeah. bundle I, stuff I, like. I know the, the one I did the video on with, with Waterfox years back. I think it goes to show you how much of the internet modern day depends on proprietary bits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's locked down and you lose functionality. Let's, um, I want to go over and, and just have a look at the, um, the four things, according to the Free Software Foundation, uh, the four essential freedoms that they would use to define if something really is free software, because uh, I think this is relevant as we are chatting yeah. here. So the four essential freedoms, the freedom to run the program as you wish for any purpose. Ergo, whether or not you think I'm, uh, you know, and um, let's see, what word can I use this week to not get banned? You know, I'm a... Um, uh, mid 1940s German soldier or something, or I'm, you know, Mother Teresa. Uh, no matter which one of those groups, whatever I want to use it for, I got to be able to use it for that application. Yeah. Number two, the freedom to study how the program works and change it so it does your computing as you wish. In other words, access to the source code is a precondition. So no matter what it is, it's not free and open source according to the Free Software Foundation if you do not access the source code. Three is the freedom to redistribute copies, either the original copies or the modified copies, so that you can help others. And fourthly, the freedom to distribute copies of your modified versions to others. So the first, the first one of those two was the unmodified. The second is the modified. By doing this, uh, you can give the whole community a chance to benefit from your changes. Access to the source code is a precondition for this. So those yeah. are the four main essentials. When we're talking about freedom, we're not talking about uh, free software as in it doesn't cost me any money. We're talking about free software as in we have liberty and how we use it, which is where I think that the term the Libre software does make more sense because in the English language we keep on um, – having multi, you know, single words with multiple definitions. Yeah, we, uh, Richard Stallman has said in his um, many talks uh, over the last 15 years that uh, if he has, uh, if he had started uh, 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 again, knowing what he knew uh, now, uh, this was 15 years ago, he would have chosen mm -hmm. uh, uh, another word because yeah. uh, the word free has an um, uh, ambiguous meaning in English. Whereas yeah, in the modern language I'm... in Europe, it, 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 uh, it, it, uh, we have uh, two, 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 two uh, uh, different words for, for, mm -hmm. for those. Yeah. yeah, and it conveys the idea that this is all just free. It, it's cheap. It doesn't cost us anything. And the, fad, the, the sad reality is the developers will do better if we can send them some money. So I am happier to donate money to a project because really where the, the best argument, I think Chris Ware had the best beginning of this if you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, you know, he started using Linux and stuff because it was free and it didn't cost yeah. him anything because he was flat broke. And most of us start life as flat broke. Some of us are still there. The ability to use a software and to be able to get real work done without going further and further into debt to do it is a positive thing. And then yeah. when you turn around though, and you're making a profit and you have some expendable money, please give back to the projects that you are uh, using for your own work, because these are our beneficial things. Well, an example of a software package that's actually fighting back to get money is make MKV. Mm -hmm. They now will let you use it for 30 days from the first time you use it to, to um, get the information off a disc mm -hmm. It'll tell you, you want to start your free trial now, and you click yes, and it says you get 30 days, and then you got to mm -hmm. go and pay. I, I I didn't look what the fee was, but um, I, I got, I, I seen somewhere where it was like $50 and if you want to continue. What's the application do? Make MKV. What it does is you put like a Blu ray disc in your drive, and it'll rip it for you. Mm -hmm. Doesn't Handbrake do that? Uh, yeah. Decrypt it too. 
Yeah, Handbrake does DVDs. I assume it would probably do Blu-ray also. Well, here's yeah, the thing. I, I got into this because I actually wanted to watch Blu-rays on my computer. Hmm. And you you can't easily do it in Linux. You can do hmm. DVDs. Okay. VLC will play a DVD for you if it's got the the DVD plugin hmm. installed. And yeah. it'll work just fine. But you install all the plugins for Blu-ray. They do not work that easy. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the, the, um, the, MKV the biggest, only the piece of software that yeah, peels a disk. The biggest hmm. problem with this is that um, the uh, American um, uh, DMCA, uh, uh, the, the Corporate Act, uh, which uh, actually uh, banned uh, the uh, CSS uh, code and, uh, in order to that one could use to... Yeah, uh, the CSS, the microvision, and all that other junk they throw mm -hmm. in it. Yeah, whereas yeah, here in this, Europe, this we can my, use like, that... Uh, I don't really care for the the full fledged HD. I, I can, I mean, I I don't have a Blu-ray player. I don't care. I'm happy yeah. enough with DVDs, you know. Um, good but that one uh, example of uh, um, about the, the uh, for freedoms uh, when you read the first one, um, an example of um, a software uh, program uh, that limits uh, how you can use. Uh, a friend of mine, um, this was also some 15 years ago. <laughs> I'm old. Uh, he. Um, um had uh, bought a new computer and he um and we uh, have uh, had a little laugh about uh, one of the uh, uh, i think it was the first screen he got when he booted uh, his uh, uh i think it was a compact uh, system um and the very first screen before he get to the windows uh, uh, end user license agreement he had to agree to the uh, uh, compact user license agreement which um, asks uh, specifically asked um, it was a, um, a checkpoint where he had to promise not to use the um, system in a, in a nuclear power plant. Mm -hmm. um, and if you check that you were going to use it, then it would shut down. You were not allowed. <laughs> yeah, that, a lot of I mean, a lot of software does that. I mean, that's actually in, in, in Deepens, you know, Deepens Eula has a clause like that. It's not specifically nuclear power plant, but you know, you have to use the software and you know, you can't use the software in illegal ways. You know, you shouldn't use software in illegal ways, but that's not free and open source software because you can't use it yeah. as you wish. <laughs> well, you know, what's legal in one country is illegal in another. Yeah. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that is for, one, one of, big one of example. Of that is, you know, if we want to watch something from, um, CBS online access, we have to buy that service to watch the you know some of the Star Trek episodes and stuff like that. Now, if you get out of the United States, it's it's included with Netflix because hmm. yeah. there's no no uh, all access CBS yeah. outside or the country. TLM.li forward slash EV. You can get yourself Express VPN, get around that geo restriction if you are so inclined. <laughs> Uh, the uh, problem with the, VPNs are is they're 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 slow, they're boggy. Yeah. So, some of them are, some are some are slow, some can be pretty quick. Yeah, so. but uh, we were talking about the DVDs okay. um, uh, just now, um, and that's one example of um, uh, where the, the law in the United States and even in the United Kingdom is different from uh, my country. I can um, illegally go into a, a video store. We don't have them anymore uh, as of a few years ago, but. I, I could go hey, into we any still have one store. Blo one blockbuster in in yeah. the USA. I have um, a family video that has stuff that's still open. Yeah, but um, I could uh, legally go to um, uh, a video store and rent a DVD, uh, uh, bring it home, um, rip the DVD, uh, return the original, and keep the copy legally in my country. Yeah, we don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's more, it's, the, um, it's, uh, you know, the uh, they do it here, but it's like yeah. really highly illegal. Yeah. yeah but, so, um, uh, the, so in, uh, in, in specifically oh, oh, in our country, they, yeah. they, 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 uh, the the government uh, compensate for this over the uh, over the uh, national budget. Yeah, they, they is, put um, in the beginning of the video messages telling you that if you do this, that they'll throw you in jail, throw well, away the key, and find you two hundred thousand dollars. That's distribution. Yeah. So there's some there's some murky area in this. That is that would be yeah. distribution. So that would be pirating. Yeah. If you were to go out get a copy of a of a DVD here rip it and distribute that that is completely against the law in the united states yeah now, Ed, and Ted zed says here dmca prevents lawful playback of dvds using linux in the us that is not the case you are perfectly able to 
you're perfectly able to take a DVD, put it in your Linux box and watch it. That is perfectly within the scope of the law. The questionable part of the law that on the letter of the law may be illegal, but it has never been challenged and never been executed on. In other words, it's completely untested is, can I, if I've purchased a DVD, can I put that in my player? Can I rip a copy of it and store the digital copy of that for my own personal use? VHS, you can. CDs, you can. DVDs, murky. That's an area that has never been tested in the law. Technically, uh, in the DMCA, it would be against the law because the Section D specifically says that um, anything you use to circumvent the encryption, and in theory, that might be circumventing encryption. But if it's for your own personal use, the law has always allowed for that type of thing. And since nobody's ever challenged that and nobody's ever been arrested on that basis, no one's ever been fined on that basis, it remains a 30 to 40 year law that is completely untested and we don't know the actual answer to it. So yeah. it's complicated. So, there are some Blu-rays that will allow you in the menu to actually get a digital downloaded copy th so you can put it on your computer or mm -hmm. save it as a backup. Yeah, but that mm -hmm. downloaded copy is locked to that uh, specific yep. um, computer, not uh, yep. the uh, computer in the next room. <laughs> so there's DRM for you. <laughs> Yeah, and that's that's certainly. I've never is, tried it because I've never got one of those DVDs, but my cousin had like I, three of them. Yeah, I I had like or way back way back about a decade ago when the digital copies were first coming out. I actually created an account. I I think they've closed down. It's like one was Popcorn Time, I think, mm -hmm. um, or is that the what's the name of the of the torrent site? I forget the name of that one. The Pirate Bay. No, no, no. There's a there's a Linux application that is actually quite illegal that basically it's just like a Netflix all torrented. There's one of those I forget. Oh um, yeah, and, and popcorn time. That is popcorn time. Okay, the one yeah. I'm thinking of is not that one. It is it is a legal one because it's tied to the digital copies you've purchased. Of course, this ties into is it Voodoo, I think, which I think was closed down. Uh but back in that time, um you would get the digital copy and it was tied to your account. So I could, anywhere I had the app, I could put the app on a phone or on a tablet or on a computer. I could log into my account and I could stream that movie from anywhere, but it was tied to my account. Um, so that was kind of yeah. the the way they managed that. So it wasn't tied to the device you yeah. downloaded, which was the old way to do it. You go on Amazon, and you to, buy something, you can download the, it um, twice. Uh, you know. the, and to add to the confusion, uh, in addition to a web page, um, a torrent page called uh, Popcorn Time. I think it's uh, closed down now. Uh, there is exactly. also a, um, a set-up box, which is also called um, uh, Popcorn Time, which is uh, a, a local uh, network uh, mm -hmm. uh, player of of your uh, uh, network shares. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I just can't remember. Because I, I mean, I, I've, I'm, I'm completely, honestly, totally ignorant as to that part of the world. It's, yeah. um, I actually, believe it or not, I actually don't break the law on the internet. <laughs> it's weird that I know of. <laughs> I saw that caveat in. Uh, so I was like, I, I don't even like. I was wondering too. It's like, I wonder how I can get a copy of this of this movie that I own the copy to, but it's damaged and I can't play it. I wonder if anybody can help me torrent a copy of it because I actually own the movie. I mean, I just can't watch it. One interesting, um, uh, one interesting um, concept of the uh, 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 copyright protection on uh, uh, the, the uh, CSS code on DVDs is a cop copy protection um, scheme. Uh, CDs came in the uh, mid uh, 2000s, um, which made a huge debacle, and they uh, uh, dropped it a few years, um, after five years or so. Um, where they tried uh, copy protection on uh, uh, CDs, um, and the fun part was that uh, the copy protection only worked on uh, Windows. If you if you used a free operating system such as Linux, <laughs> the copy protection did not work at all because Oops. the copy protection was a Windows program. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, that that makes sense too, because you'd want to play the CD in your car as well. Yeah, and then um, uh, several, uh, several of the uh, uh, car wow. CD players um, uh, was uh, uh, bricked because uh, of the, the, they didn't uh, um, the uh, uh, copyright protection did something to yeah. the player, and they never worked again after that. <laughs> yeah, there's mm. there's there's some fun stuff out there. Mm -hmm. um, 
But Let's um uh, going back to the topic, um, um, the interesting um, uh, uh, the thing that most people don't know about uh, is that there is a difference between free software and open source, even mm-hmm. though they are they, they, uh, two terms. Um, and even Stallman says it, that uh, those two terms, they uh, cover most, um, uh, most likely uh, almost the same software. Uh, but the, the two terms are not the same. Uh, yeah. There are uh, ideological and, uh, and uh, ethical differences. Um, the the yeah. open source term came in uh, 97, 98, when um, uh, some software, um, uh, free software um, uh, people, um, need, uh, they, uh, uh, they figured out, or, or, or at least they thought, um, that uh, the term free software uh, was a bad term yes, b- uh, because the uh, word free has um, uh, two meanings. Um, yeah. And they the... also, and uh, in addition, they um, uh, had another type of baggage to the new term. Yeah, I mean, so. one, of the, one of the main factors is something can be open source but not free in that you can yeah. see the source code, but you are, it would be a violation of the copyright to do anything with the source code other than view it. And that would be a case yeah. of a software that is open source. So you can audit it. You can say, okay, I have confidence the software is not doing anything nefarious. I have, I will run it under the the terms that they have released it. So I can't change it, modify it, copy it, use it, or anything else. But it's open source. Get, but that wouldn't be I can free. get it. Consider that, Sammy. Yeah. Now, what's the what's source. an example of a free software that isn't open source? I'm not sure there would be one because open source does portion of what is defined by free. Is there anything anybody can think of that would be um, free software and, but um, not open source? Uh, one of the uh, open source uh, initiative uh, uh, the board members. Um, I don't know. I, I don't remember his name, uh, but he has uh, debated uh, Stallman on a few occasions. Um, he says that um, he said in uh, uh, it's 20 years ago today. There were two uh, uh, documentaries that came out 20 years ago about uh, uh, Linux, and um, one of them said in one of those documentaries that um, uh, that uh, 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 open source is the is the same thing as free software, only that they use a different term and. And uh, they have a, a slightly different uh, view on um, uh, what is important and what is not. Uh, so uh, Stallman uh, he has always made the point that um, uh, having fr- uh, the important thing is having free software. It is, it is n- all, uh, not at all important to have software that is powerful and useful if it is, if it uh, doesn't mm-hmm. uh, have, have yeah. The but what I'm what I'm asking is is there a specific software that would be free software that's not open source because it would appear that open source would be a condition to free software. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it, so it, it, well, like that 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 if, if you downloaded a package from GitHub and you had to compile it all yourself, that would be open source software. Yeah. Maybe yeah, not. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. Software yeah. can be open source, but not free. My question is, is there is, is there any free software that's not open source? Because it would appear nope. that open source is tied yeah, to the definition freeware? of free. No, it, no, 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 no. We're talking about yeah. free software as in Libra, free. Libra, okay, yeah. Yeah. And then the free That's software what, is always uh, this, is Bender. always open source software, but open source software does not necessarily mean that it is uh, free software. So Yeah, so uh, Ed, Ted, Ted and Dr. Quantum the... Alpha say Vivaldi, uh, or at least Ed says closest yeah. you can think of Vivaldi. And even even that's yeah, that's too. not even that's not even specifically free software. There are proprietary blobs in it, albeit it is in the theming. Yeah, the codex I don't are mentioned. proprietary in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the codex as well. I know the I theming is the theming is have... is proprietary, but all of the yeah. the underpinnings how the browser works are all open source. Your question to me is an oxymoron because I, it's in it the name. Be. Well, I am a moron, so it's all good. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> you are clearly not. Yeah, yeah this is moron. getting into what came first, the chicken or the <laughs> Don't egg. Don't even say that ever. Clearly yeah. the chicken came first. Come on. Yeah. God made the chicken, chicken made the egg. <laughs> yeah. Is it free or is it open source? Or is it open yeah. source to make so, it free? Or to yeah, make I, it open I think source. That that's not... open source. They go hand in hand. 
Yeah, it it is, what, what, it is, what we are saying though yeah, but, is is something can be open source but not be free, but something can't be free without being open source. Yeah. But um, uh, the um, uh, yeah. the reason that uh, Stallman uh, and the Free Software Foundation insist on using the term free uh, free software. Okay, I think I see is, what you're getting at. Is mm -hmm. uh, is the idea behind the, the, the two terms? Uh, the Free mm -hmm. Software Foundation has, and, and I am, I am, uh, I completely agree with those um, ideas. That um, uh, you should have the freedom to do whatever you want with the software, even if that means that you have to have someone help you understand uh, what, what it does. Because most people are not programmers. Um, some people can uh, can uh, manage to compile a thing, but if you need to install a um, uh, dependency, or you need to uh, tweak a, a setting in order to make it compile. Uh, uh, most of, the, of those people are completely lost, and they need some help. Uh, that is part of having uh, free software. The freedom. It's to... free of ball and chains. Let's yeah. bring this a little more mainstream. Yeah. What do you guys feel about? How do you guys feel about uh, the big players of the major industries making their software? compatible with Linux, like proprietary software specifically. I mean, I'm okay with it personally. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to use Microsoft software. If, uh, if a non Microsoft software is available, um, obviously when I first switched to Linux, I was in the process of figuring out what I want to do. I was using Microsoft office, but I was like, okay, open office, LibreOffice, whatever. I was already accustomed to that. Who, who cares? But I'm like, man, I, I paid money. I paid money a decade ago right. for my Adobe suite. I want to keep my Adobe yeah. suite. How do we get the Adobe Absolutely. suite to run on Linux? Yeah. And it's like, why bother? There's other applications that can do just as fine. Um, yeah, I really, you know. I really think that comes down to a matter of choice, and yeah, I totally yeah. agree. I mean, I, I believe I've replaced everything in my Adobe software suite with free software, and yeah. uh, I'm actually, I'm happier. I have found after, you know, after being completely proficient in both uh, Photoshop and in GIMP, uh, I actually find GIMP to be better to use, uh, having proficiency in both of them. Um, yeah. I think it does make more more sense in how things are laid out. It is more intuitive when you understand them both. Um, as far as um, web design type stuff, mm -hmm. you know, Bluefish does like Dreamweaver. You can still see a, a what you see is what you get editor view. There's a couple Linux applications that can do that, um, but I haven't used a what you see is what you get in Dreamweaver in uh, four or five years anyway. So. I have I another care? proprietary conundrum, mm -hmm. okay? Let's say, okay, they make proprietary software. It works on Linux. You pay for it. You download it from your repository. How do you make this now work from one distro to another distro to another distro and still maintain the amount of money you paid for it and it's yours? Because you know the um, same thing you downloaded from Debian may not work on Arch, you know, the same way, and you may have yeah, to use an I mean, Arch the only, package. The only may thing I can think of is is a is like a toggle, just a toggle switch or a check switch. So I can think of the software that I just purchased that they're working on the Linux version, but you know they have Windows and Mac, so uh, it turns out it runs well under Wine, and so I registered it under you know under my system on on wine and it works just fine and uh you know what i would have to do is if i want to jump computers is i just have to contact the company and tell them to scrub the old license and add the new one um and that's you know that's what the only do. way they can really do it is give you a a, a key that works with it and the key yeah. works from whatever you yeah, get it from and, and the and and that's kind of what i'm getting at they use a key to make sure it works the question is you know how do you do that without cracking it too easily now, because that's going to be easy to crack now the in the old days and really super expensive oh, yeah. proprietary software they gave you a hardware key that went into your serial port yeah yeah. Mm, okay. And you had to have that hardware key plugged in to make your copy of that software work. Yeah, maybe we do that time into like UB keys or something, you know? I remember, um, I think it's 10 years ago, uh, Linus, uh, Linus Torvalds was once asked about the... Um, uh, AutoCAD uh, was like that. You needed the proprietary key they sent you to go in your serial port to unlock it and use mm. it. Not the copy I had. <laughs> EE designer that made printed circuit boards was another one. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, what about you. selling if you're a large company and you're selling to businesses that we don't want to deal with multiple vendors. We want to keep yeah, things well, simple. Well, that's, that's where, license. yeah, that's where, um, you know, Snap, Flatpak, and, and App yeah. Images could come into play because with those, you can say, all right, I'm going to give you a copy of the App Image. Now, the, one of these questions is you can't take care of distribution, but are like, great. like this, the, the Flatpak is doable because you can sideload a flat pack on a repository. So what the company could do in that case is, okay, you have access to the repository. Here's, here's your repository key, you know, just sign it with a key. And then yeah. I can use that flat pack key on any one of the Linux distributions. Since flat pack is fairly universal, you could therefore have a, a way to paid software. And then, you know, you could pull that. So we there's this is done a lot totally, in yeah. Word, in WordPress uh, with WooCommerce plugins. You pay for it in the it's a one year support and updates. So with the one year support and updates, you get in there and you push all of the updates. And then once it expires, you can't update anymore. You still have control of it. You still can use it on that one server, that one system. You can't download it anymore. You can't install it anymore. You can't update it anymore until you pay them again for for it they've kind of solved that and that would work on a linux platform as well so that type of yeah. format that's called a subscription yeah yeah but that's and which is which is fine i think that's not what linux is about linux ain't really about subscription well linux isn't about proprietary software either and so if you're talking about running proprietary software on linux you may as well have a subscription too i'm i'm not all about them personally but anything that's going to break down the barriers and allow more people to use linux is going to be good yep. for the community yeah yeah i Any, remember that and, to um, make it more accessible and, well, yeah, because I hopped onto Linux because I wanted to own my computer and I wanted to own everything inside of it, too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I like Linux, because I prefer to have software that I don't have to uh, I don't have to have those those prison cells for. Yeah. So at what point and this is the thing that I always kind of dread because I feel as it, I feel as though it is coming. But I don't think it is coming with every uh, base distro. I think it's coming mainly with Ubuntu. They turn into Microsoft. Mm -hmm. It's Microsoft number two. Yeah, yeah. and this is the um, um, this is the um, because... uh, one, one of the items, uh, one of the ideas that uh, Richard Stallman uh, had, uh, one of the irks he has against the open source camp, uh, so to speak, because um, they, um, I, I think he's uh, right to a certain extent, uh, to, to a, up to a point. That uh, many of them uh, only concern themselves about uh, uh, having something uh, that works, uh, whether it's proprietary or something else. Whereas the free software camp, uh, where I uh, um, I'm uh, one of them, um, uh, uh, for those, uh, it's more important to have the freedom to do what we want. And if that means that there's certain hardware that we can't use, then we will uh, leave it out that hardware. Yeah. And that's well, my you... personal approach. That's what the, the Arch users, you know, uh, when it comes to Ubuntu and the direction they're heading into, that's one of the things they're thinking about. And that's why one of the reasons they're on Arch. Mm -hmm. It's like the opposite extreme from the other. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on Debian because yep. Ubuntu's like a middle thing. I'm on the yep. other end of the spectrum with Debian. <laughs> Quantum Alpha says, being a lifetime open office Pretty user, much. first time I tried Microsoft Office, my reaction is, what? People actually pay for that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. You know. The last, uh, office the, 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 the last Office version I had was Office 97, I think, and mm. I didn't pay for it. I have a Office. I think, which one was 2003? Was that the one with for set? From the front out for Vista, I think. Yeah, I 2003, yeah. I think that's the last one I had. All right. I think. Um, no, no, I had 2010. I think I had a. No, was it 10? No, I, I didn't have that. 2007. That's you the know last what one. it is. I bought Tom? it. I bought it when I was. Uh, I was leaving the one college, and since yeah. I was like, "Hey, let's take advantage of my college discount and upgrade my software at a low cost." <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. 2007 was pretty pretty decent. I, I think Microsoft Office gained its popularity not because it was any better than anything else. 
but because of the name Microsoft. It's brand that's, awareness. That's yeah. probably the case. I mean, I, yeah. I remember having, I have still have my OEM Office 95. <clears throat> yeah. Love that application. All right. Um, um, yeah, we are... uh, one thing that, um, yeah. uh, speaking of uh, proprietary and uh, uh, whatnot, um, um, uh, in, uh, these days, uh, the um, kernel um, uh, uh, maintainers uh, have uh, they have uh, 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 separated the uh, uh, closed source part of the uh, kernel into a separate package that you have to inter uh, in, uh, um, get uh, separately. Um, but before they did that, um, uh, um, Linus Tolva was asked in a talk once uh, what his view on uh, closed source uh, binary, uh, binary drivers such as NVIDIA drivers. And he said that uh, he himself, he would um, um, not in a million years um, use any uh, closed source uh, binary drivers because he didn't know uh, what they did. And yeah. uh, But he had no problems with people yeah, I mean, using it themselves, but they... Yeah. yeah, there's there's ways to see if it's doing anything nefarious. You know, technically, as long as it's not causing you know packets to leave your system, then that's <laughs> you know okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I will prefer that, but I'm not necessarily that extreme. Um, we're coming up on eight, so we want to wrap this up here. I have another stream tonight at nine. We will be on my other stream tonight. I'll drop the link in for that in a moment. Uh, Salvo, give us your final words. Yeah, so uh, for those who are interested in, uh, or haven't heard these uh, ideas before, um, uh, my uh, advice would be to go to the, uh, the GNU.org and the FSF.org and uh, read uh, what they say about uh, 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 this uh, and, uh, and, and read up on uh, what free software is. And um, mm -hmm. because there is a difference between free software and open source. So, yeah, and understanding the difference. All right, Dan, give us your final words. Um, my final words is if there's some open source software that you like and you use all the time, throw them developers a bone and give them a few bucks. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I used to do a little bit of programming. It's very hard work. It takes a magnificent brain to even uh, jump into this field because when you write code, you got to remember 500 lines back what you wrote to reattach your code to some of it. Yeah, and if they don't have some uh, form of uh, monetary compensation to get in, maybe you can send them an, uh, an old-fashioned postcard and say some nice things. Yeah, yeah say do something to, to to acknowledge that they're doing something that makes their time worthwhile. Yeah, uh, Mark, give us your final words. I'm not sure if Mark is there or not. <laughs> Well, I will go ahead and do my final words unless Mark jumps in. Uh, I am streaming on my other channel tonight. This is uh, the Christian channel. We're continuing on looking at Hebrews chapter, I think we're on 10, finishing up Hebrews chapter 10. We will be over there. I dropped the link in the chat for anybody that is interested in that. You can jump on over there. And uh, with that, I think we will jump off here. Thanks for coming along, everybody. And uh, we will see you tomorrow for the weekly news roundup. Gratitude. Ooh, the news.